If you're new, I would love for you to introduce yourself, even if you're going to present later on, so people know who's in the room. I'll start. I'm sure I'm one of the new faces. Okay. I'm Amy Lavalle. I am now working with the Brian Grant Foundation as their Parkinson's liaison. And so I'm sitting in for Katrina today. Awesome. Oh, well, I also have Parkinson's diagnosed six years. Oh, well, thank you for being here. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's good good to have you here. Who, who, who else? Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Noel. I know some of you. Um, I'm sitting in for Neil Braun today from Mediflix. Nice to meet you. Eric Anderson. Uh, I'm the uh, VP of Clinical Ops for Synapticure. Um, and we're a recent partner. I think uh, Dr. Hatcher Martin is, is going to be coming on a little bit if she's not with a patient. But uh, I want to say thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is Tom Faber. I'm a neurologist with Synapticure, also with uh, Dr. Martin. Hi, Tom. Thanks for being here. Hi, um, my name is Hiral Shah. I'm a neurologist and movement disorder specialist at Columbia University. And um, we're here today to share some of our work with you. We developed a storybook called PD Mover, so I think we'll be presenting later. But yeah. thanks for having us. Hi, I'm Laurie Quinn. I'm a professor of movement science and kinesiology, and I'm a physical therapist. And I work with Dr. Shaw, and we'll be presenting on the PD Movers book. Hi, my name is Amanda, and um, I actually work with Larry in the world of radio with Forest Entertainment. Um, but I'll be presenting later at, in my capacity as the founder of Lead Podcasting. Um, and I'm going to be showing a storytelling tool that might be beneficial for uh, this group. So we are. Uh, here's our agenda. As you can see, there's a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to show you some maps and stats. We got uh, th four special guests and then uh, we'll get to as many updates as we can towards the end. So um, really, uh, it's an exciting day and. Uh, Thank you to everybody who's going to be uh, helping to present today. Um, so let's get started with. Um, so you're used to seeing this map uh, of, of the world because uh, we, we use it quite a bit. Um, but we now have 6,224 members in 93 countries with 115 plus partners, which is very exciting. So uh, thank you for uh, being a partner and for being here. Then our next, I just started doing breaking these out. So we're gonna we'll work on Europe next, but um, in the U.S. and in Canada, here's sort of how the membership breaks out, and you can see the different colors represent different amounts. So in the U.S., the yellow has 101 to 500 members in that state. Uh, in uh, Canada, um, the five the blue represents 500 to 99 and 999. So um, you know, we see British Columbia, where I am, uh, is leading the way, uh, but uh, California and New York aren't too far behind. So uh, it's, a, it's just another way to look at it. And so we'll, we'll be rolling some of these other maps out as we go along. Um, and we'll post these on, on our website as well. But it's just a different way to look at the membership and how it breaks out. If you hadn't seen this yet, uh, this is important news that's come out this week. Uh, they are expanding the uh, trial for uh, Bhutan tap, or uh, uh, I forget how you say boot, 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 boot tap, or I think that's what it is. Expanding to Europe, uh, Anovis is actively recruiting for phase three study with 50 clinical trial sites open to the US. And they just approved 48 more sites in five European uh, countries, Italy, Spain, Hungary, Poland, and Germany. Um, and so this is uh, up for an oral pill once a day, uh, and uh, this is, has a lot of potential. So very excited to see that. So just want to make sure you are aware of that. And now we have special guest number one, uh, Haral. Uh, the floor is yours. I will uh, stop presenting uh, and let you take over. Thank you so much, uh, Larry, and thanks everyone to 
include us in this amazing meeting. Um, so as Larry uh, on that previous slide showed, I'm a neurologist and I work with Dr. Lori Quinn, uh, the physical therapist as she introduced herself at Columbia University. And you know we really saw that for the last few years, we've been trying to work to address issues of care engagement by minority populations in our area. And the culmination of several years of work of community engagement has led to the development of this, what we call the storybook, um, PD Movers We Keep Moving. And so it's a, I'm going to flip through it as I talk. Um, it's a compilation of first person narratives that are accompanied by these very lifelike and real illustrations. And we asked um, this group of 10 remarkable individuals and their care partners to share with us their narratives or their journey with Parkinson's disease, how they may initially have noticed symptoms, how they then came to recognize that this was Parkinson's disease and how they were diagnosed, some of their reactions to that. And then we've interspersed educational material to then explain what Parkinson's disease is. So we think this is a really interesting and unique um, resource that goes through from diagnosis, um, coping with the diagnosis, and then some treatment strategies where we provide an overview of what the components of a care team might be. Um, as we've shared this resource with our personal, professional, and spiritual networks, we've gotten a really just wonderful reaction. I think that these authentic stories are resonating with individuals. The images are vibrant and underscore the importance of representation. And we've been able to highlight some of the issues that people from the African-American and Black communities might face as they're dealing with this journey of Parkinson's disease, including delays in diagnosis and their perceptions of the medical care service. Um, so our initial main goal is really just to spread the word about this resource. Um, we've think there's many different applications to it. It could be shared with individuals and families that are new to Parkinson's disease. It allows them to facilitate conversations. You know, many patients of mine, including some featured in this book, have shared that they previously lived in secrecy and didn't share their diagnosis with their family. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to acknowledge they had Parkinson's. And because of this book, they've now been able to have a conversation with their family and get that additional support they need. Um, it's also being used to hopefully heighten awareness of Parkinson's disease in this community for providers, because I think often providers still have, unfortunately, um, the misconception that this is a disease that affects old white men, uh, which we all know is not the case. Um, and further, it can help serve as a template or model that others might use to facilitate care engagement and to just better understand people's experience with this disease. Um, as we move forward and continue to share this work, we've been getting requests to use this type of approach for other communities, um, even heterogeneous ones like the Hispanic or Latinx, but Southeast Asian, East Asian, and so forth, as well as developing a separate series that addresses topics, for instance, palliative care or surgical options. So um, I was just really excited to share this work with you all. I'll try to keep it brief knowing the limitations um, and stop there and just invite Lori to also offer her comments or reflections. And then if anyone has any questions, of course. Yeah, thank you. No, I think um, in many ways, the book just speaks for itself and we appreciate the um, comments. And I do just wanna underscore um, I think the importance of this is while, while the book is an important output, we think that the process that was used to go uh -huh. about this, which was really driven by the individuals who told the stories and we just helped to make it a reality for them and um, really using a community-based approach in, um, in developing this. And so we're really looking forward to doing that as um, Dr. Shaw said with other um, topics and populations, and we think it has um, great promise. And I understand you're ordering more hardbacks. That's right. Yeah, we have been trying to acquire more funding and sponsorships. So we've gotten a small chunk of money and APDA, as they pointed out, um, they'll be distributing a lot of the hard copies for us. And we thank them for that support. Um, it's so important because we just keep getting asked for how can I get a hard copy? And 
I think the hard copy is also um, really much more impactful than the digital yeah. version. Um, so we're just, we want this to get into the hands of as many people as we can. Oh. Certainly we are looking for additional mechanisms of support to support the printing of additional books. The more we print, the cost go is driven down. So we're trying to kind of bring together different pools of funds to support that. But certainly um, even translation, for example, we know that it's not um, a solution or it's not the ultimate end result. We're hoping to develop something similar for the Hispanic community, but we're hoping to present the work at WPC. And because it's in Spain, we're planning to provide a translated version. Great. In Thank Spanish. You. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Jean Blake here. I co-chair uh, one of the working groups for WPC on anti-stigma. And our target, uh, you know, we still have to create so much more awareness of the resources and so on within the PD community itself. But our target audience um, needs to be bigger uh, in terms of addressing the stigma issue. We did already come across your resource. I, uh, we had it, uh, one of our committee members was uh, aware of it. So it's a wonderful, wonderful resource and a wonderful template for, uh, like for example, I think here, Larry in, uh, BC, we've got that Chinese community where we would need to have uh, translated versions. Uh, so, but that again, we're targeting the group that already has PD and the caregivers. So has there been any thought in terms of that uh, broader awareness as well? I mean, this is just uh, a magnificent piece of work, but we're also um, interested in seeing what, what kind of materials could be created to address the the larger community that these people live within to assist with reducing the, the stigma issues. So I certainly think that this tool can be used as a first step. You know, I've even shared it among like my family members who tell me that, oh, I never knew that I've never met someone who's black with Parkinson's or I didn't know that black people could be affected by Parkinson's disease. So I think that Though this isn't the perfect tool, and it certainly will be more engaging to someone who is affected by Parkinson's or knows someone affected by Parkinson's, I do think that using illustrations and this type of first person storytelling is much more compelling and can allow for it to be engaging even for someone who doesn't know anything about Parkinson's disease. I think that part of the things that we've been thinking about is how do we get that interest and in, get it into the hands of community members? For instance, like we were thinking, you know, putting it in barbershops or uh, beauty salons or, um, phys or the gym or physical therapy offices, places where it's not just for people with Parkinson's, but I think that's where, you know, the first uh, edition was printed in November. So this is, these are the types of suggestions and, um, um, that we're looking for is a, how do we make that a reality? But certainly if, if um, we, I would be very interested and open to adapting this and maybe making it a version that's more um, easily digestible by the, the uh, more broader community. Thank you. I think one of the things our working group uh, has spoken about, and again, there's a, a need for sponsorship is uh, to create a website that would be accessible internationally and just have these kinds of resources there for people to uh, pick and choose through and, and maybe use as templates for their own community, whether um, uh, translation is required or just, you know, um, uh, different faces to, to the storybook. So uh, eventually we we're presenting also at uh, WPC and I uh, hope you would be able to attend and, and uh, profile your work a little bit as part of the discussion. It's a, on the Tuesday, the, one of the pre-conference pre workshops. That would be amazing. Thank you. And like, yeah, potentially developing a, a guide maybe for cultural adaptation, which would include translation, but also other aspects that one needs to continue a, a consider apart from language only. So I'd love to have your contacts to talk a little bit more. Yes. Um, Larry, can you can you provide that to me? I can, me? or uh, her, her all, if you're can, comfortable, you can just put it into the chat because I know Helen would like to get in touch with you as well. Yes, absolutely. And I'll include Lori your we'll, well try not to inundate sure. you, but it would be great. <laughs> no, please. I I would love it. It would be so make me so happy. <laughs> That's great. So and can I add one? Can I say oh, one sure, thing? Jenny, go ahead. Too? 
Um, for those that are new that haven't met me, I'm Jenny Tecito. I, I work with LSVT Global, but my background is I'm a physical therapist. Um, and so I'm part of the wellness committee um, through PD Avengers as well, where we're trying to put together resources. Um, and our second phase of our project is to address um, resources different for different cultures, things um, in, you know, their words and their terms that make sense with their cultural beliefs, religious beliefs, things like that, that affect maybe how they manage a diagnosis with Parkinson's and how other people around them also are affected by that. So yeah, I would love to connect with you guys too, maybe more to talk about um, that second phase of this project and, and how we might be able to include your resource with that as well. That's great. That's, yeah, thank you. Our special guest, Amanda Cupido. Uh, and it, you know, it's, it, it's nice that it's almost Valentine's Day and we have a Cupid here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Amanda. That's good. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> um, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for um, inviting me in. And it's really nice to hear about all of the initiatives this team is working on and the collaborations that are happening. Um, so what I'm here to present is an, an app that's not nothing to download it's just an app that lives it's a browser app that lives in any sort of web browser um and it was created originally to help capture oral histories capture people's stories um and especially those of the elderly and this was created as a community give back project um from my company lead podcasting and it's completely free to use and so it's pretty powerful so i'm going to do a quick demo of what this tool looks like and what it's able to do. Um, and then Larry had the great idea of thinking that maybe there's a way to customize it for um, people in, in the Parkinson's community and, and, and activists in this space um, as a way to help capture memories beyond just um, the initial reason why we made this. So uh, anyway, Okay, so here it is. Larry was showing a screen grab. So right now it is, it's called Remember This. It goes hand in hand with a podcast that's also available on all podcast players called Remember This. Um, but this website you can visit by going rememberthispodcast.com. So if you want to record your story, this is just meant to make recording and editing easier. Um, it was sparked because I had a lot of people attending podcast workshops I do asking me how to how to do this and trying to take on learning audio editing for the first time and we just thought there's got to be a better way so you there are a bunch of questions that are going to be prompted to be asked and we're just going to do a test right now and users will have the opportunity to answer them or skip over them and then have it mixed down into their own little podcast episode so i'm going to just show you a couple of examples of answers so what's your name and how old are you and when you click record answer it counts you down with three seconds my name is Amanda Capito and I'm 34 years old. You hit stop recording and then you just hit next. Where are you living right now and how did you end up here? I am living in Toronto. I came to the city for university and then I never left. Okay, um, proudest moment. Um, proudest moment is joining the PD Avengers meeting right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we'll just do one more, a hardship that you endured. Uh, one of the hardships I've endured was the COVID-19 pandemic, but it did force me to slow down and really reflect on what's important to me in my life. Okay, so now I'm just going to skip through the rest. But of course, there's other general questions about life and experiences and memories. Um, and so once you get to the final page, you have a story that generates automatically. So now let's take a listen. Remember This is a podcast about memories because some stories deserve to live forever. I'm Amanda Capito. On today's episode... My name is Amanda Capito and I'm 34 years old. Let's get started. So where are you living right now and how did you end up here? I am living in Toronto. I came to the city for university and then I never left. What would you say was your proudest moment? 
proudest moment is joining the PD Avengers meeting right now. <laughs> Tell me about a hardship that you... Okay, so you kind of get the idea of how this gets pieced together. Um, so I'll stop it there. But what I will uh, share with you just to so you can hear the ending of these episodes is um, a, a submission we've had. So this... This is online and available for anyone to access through this website. And so we've had, been promoting this now for about a year and a half. And we've had people from all over the world submit stories. Wow. And it's, it's been quite powerful. Um, and we've also had a lot of kids using the app. Um, but he, here's the ending of, of one of the people we were able to capture. And this is Peggy. And she was 101 at the time of recording. Tell me about a hardship that you went through that is unforgettable, but formative to who you are today. Oh, it was during the war, 43 and 45. Me and my brother and my sister were three of us in the service. We were very close to one another, you know? We got along so good at home. There was, because uh, we had nothing. What would you say was your proudest moment? The most proud of thing was when I got presented with my sergeant stripes. I was so proud of myself. I thought, me, a sergeant? I must send a letter to my brother and tell him. Thanks for listening. For more stories like this one, visit rememberthispodcast.com. The technology is pretty powerful and a first of its kind. It's really simple and user-friendly on purpose with really big font so that we could make it accessible and high contrast colors. Um, each answer gives people up to two minutes to provide an answer and then it does stop at recording, but you have the opportunity to re-record an answer if you were listening to a back and didn't like it. Um, at the end of the whole process, the last page, users have the opportunity to just download that audio for themselves and keep it and that could be it um but if they like they can submit it to the podcast there's an extra button to click and saying submit my story to be shared with the world and so um they have that opportunity to either keep it private or make it go public at the end of the process and so um yeah so this podcast has now been in two seasons they're typically pretty short vignettes um, around five or 10 minutes long, but the podcasts have the the, the technology allows you to make up to a 20 minute episode. Um, and so it can be used immediately through this website that exists, but um, there might be some other opportunities for collaboration with a customized approach. Yeah. So yeah, Amanda and I were talking about this just the other day. I got really excited about it. And I thought we could customize all the questions around Parkinson's, like what, tell us your diagnosis story and all this, and we can change the length of the answers. Um, we could do three minutes for your, for your diagnosis story and one minute for something else. And, uh, but it, it, we could, we could let white label this and have it ready for the WPC this year. Um, and it would, you know, the, the, there is a developer that is willing to help us. Um, he needs to get paid, but not a lot. Um, I mean, it would normally cost $10,000 and he's just saying, pay us what you can. Um, and I would like to give him as close to $10,000 as possible. If you guys think this is a good idea. And if you do think about how much you may be able to contribute to it. Feedback. The great. It's a great thing to do. And definitely with the podcast, you know, it just helps a lot and it's short. And the, I'd like to talk to you, Amanda, potentially about something else. It's um, I'll send you my email. Okay. And there, I think it'd be pretty cool if they had like a booth there. And they pop in booths and record. Yeah. Yeah. It's live right there. Yeah. I mean, it's instant and it sounds professional. Yeah. Chris. Gianna. So yeah, Larry. So I think, yeah, this is, I think this is great. And I think like of the WPC and I think of, you know, we had looked at, I think story time, like having that kind of booth where people share their story. Quick question. And I may have been missed this and I did apologize. Where would these lend live? Like, so if you were to make, so right now uh, with remember this, it's that the people download the audio themselves and they just take it and then they have that opportunity to submit it and it would go on the podcast, which is on all the podcast players. But if we did 
um, for instance, that customized app, we could, there's a lot of um, final step decisions you can make. So one of the easiest things is that every time someone does one, they would just click yes to a terms and conditions where it would get emailed to a certain point person. And so as soon as the, the, the story was made, you'd get an email with that audio for you to review and potentially decide what you want to do with it. There is also the opportunity for it to be uploaded directly to a podcast RSS feed. Um, one of the things our lawyer kind of flagged was that you just do want a human eye on it in case yeah. someone goes off on a crazy rant or uses it irresponsibly. So, um, but there can be some automation features built out to help streamline a process depending on what your needs are. Great, thank you. Yeah. What'd you think, Christiana? Well, I just think it's interesting, right? You're thinking about the WPC. If yeah. you capture all these stories there, where do they live? Right, Thanks yeah, so that. we would. what we would do is, I mean, we could put it on the World Parkinson's uh, Day website where everybody can access it because that's the communities, or we could, everybody could have a little landing page and we could have multiple people get copies of it. I mean, we could build it out on the PD Avengers website and you could link to it. I mean, I'm open to whatever ideas. Any other thoughts? It reminds me of, have you ever heard of that like mortified podcast, but it's like they do have live events too. And then they sometimes repackage them into a podcast. But like, I think you could invite people to share their story and it could become, you know, a way to put them together. But also maybe like I could envision like maybe there would be a story our day in Australia or UK or whatever. Um, but that this could be kind of the umbrella that those all live under. Yeah. I do oh. think the point about maybe um, demoing at support groups, like just before the WPC, right? Like just, yeah. it does seem, you know, Uber uh, user friendly, but just, I think before, um, you know, just For to sure. get some more feedback specifically, have people with Parkinson's, you know, do it would be great. I mean, again, StoryCorps was always, you know, interest in doing something with StoryCorps, you know, in the Parkinson's community. And um, to the best of my knowledge, I never, we we're never able to kind of make it happen, but this is very similar to that, which would be really interesting. It's very cool. Can the person recording the video post pictures of himself in the video? In the Say that again, Brian? Can the person that's recording the, the, the message leave a video uh, picture of themselves in the video? There's no video component in this app, um, but we also uh, did have an opportunity for people to send in a picture afterwards, yeah. so that's why um, I did have a picture of Peggy you saw. So um, there's like- I mean, just in the graphics in general. Just in the yeah. graphics in general. Individual. Yeah. That's great. All right. Amanda, thank you. We'll be in touch. Great. You can hang out for as long as you like. Sure. Thanks. Uh, I don't know. Did Massimilano have a, a question? Oh, uh, Massimilano. Hello. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for my lights. Uh, still in the night. Uh. But uh, of course, uh, yes, uh, fantastic uh, idea, fantastic way to collect a lot of story. Of course, I love more to to don't make uh, because I love for the, the DJ people. <laughs> so to, 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 to interview, to make interview, to customize uh, directly for you listen to people. So the more content human is, uh, I think that is, uh, is of course is normal, but. Uh, in this way, you can collect uh, many stories. You can give opportunity to all the people to 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 to, to record the story. But of course, uh, don't forget that uh, the contact of the people between you. so one to one is uh, much better. So <laughs> we can also uh, don't forget about this. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. We'll uh, we'll all digest that and. Um, you know, if you have any thoughts on how we can finance it, feel free to email me, Larry at pdavengers.com. Um, and then uh, I'm going to call in now uh, Laura Noel or, uh, from uh, Metaflix. Uh, Metaflix is helping us, um, and that we've got a nice incentive campaign going on. You should have all received collateral materials, but I'm going to have Laura update us on the campaign. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Larry. I'll just share a couple of slides. Um, I think many of you know um, Neil already, um, so I, uh, I'm sitting in for him today. But just in case you are not familiar with Metaflix, 
Um, Metaflix is a platform um, available currently at metaflix.com. And we're also now a downloadable app, which is super exciting for us. And um, the, Metaf the Metaflix platform um, launched originally with Parkinson's. So we have the most robust set of content for Parkinson's with um, also the ro ro most robust set of uh, Parkinson's experts. Um, but the, pl the platform itself engages patients. Um, really our, our pride and joy is that we have trusted and personalized health content. So everything on the site is vetted by health pro um, professionals and some of the experts in terms of the Parkinson's that lead um, and review our content include Ray Dorsey, Matt Stern, Michael Oaken, and Boss Bloom. So they've really spearheaded a lot of the content that you'll see on the site now. And what they do is they um, provide um, advice. So if patients have specific questions um, that are not available on the site, they will actually um, will actually get back to those patients within 48 hours with an answer to their specific questions. Um, we also have a very robust set of um, educational videos, and we also have um, what we couch as um, edutainment, so it's entertaining type of videos between original um, documentaries. Um, we have kind of talk show formats with uh, Joan London. We also have curated content from um, a whole set of medical experts and leading institutions um, such as Cleveland Clinic. Um, we're onboarding Michigan right now, um, <clears throat> HSS, Yale, so a whole host of institutions and um, valued partners such as PD Avengers and LSVT Global, thanks to Jenny. Um, and um, just just so much robust content. And we're always working to, um, to uh, grow the content set um, specifically also with hopefully soon Synapticure. So um, the connection to resources, again, um, just a vast set of medical institutions, foundations, associations, um, and uh, new, new programs that we're adding all the time. Um, but specifically, um, Metaflix had partnered with PD Avengers to put together an email and a social media campaign to help support PD Avengers to raise funds. And between now and March 31st, Metaflix will donate funds to PD Avengers for every person who registers for Metaflix through the PD Avengers channel. And then comes when they come back to the site, um, there's an additional donation made. So really, it's no cost to anyone who does it, but yet we're we're contributing to PD Avengers for every meaningful um, click and registration that comes to our site from the PD Avengers um, page. So the sooner that people sign up and the more often they visit, the more funds that we'll donate to PD Avengers. So we just wanna keep this top of mind and anything that um, anybody on the call can do to either remind or reshare to their members um, with the toolkit that Larry has provided, that would be absolutely wonderful. And um, wave one was deployed about three weeks ago now on um, January 23rd. It was really successful. We saw a huge surge coming in. Um, we had about 350 people from that single campaign, but we really think that we could do more. So we wanted to use the opportunity today to say, please look out. I think Larry's gonna be sending out a reminder for the campaign. So anything that you can do to spread the word would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Uh, PD Avengers is really appreciative uh, appreciative of the uh, the opportunity to to raise some operating funds. It, it costs about two hundred and fifty dollars a month for us to to keep the PD Avengers just rolling with the the meetings and the zooms and the website and whatnot, and, and that's all coming from private funds. Um, again, reminder: we we don't do traditional fundraising because uh, we leave that to you guys, the experts. You know how to raise it better than we do, and you know where to spend it and how to how to be efficient with it. Um, and uh, what we want to do though is we we do need to find ways to to uh, find unique ways to, to, to fund what we do. Um, one of the other things we're gonna start doing is allowing uh, organizations to sponsor certain pages on the website. So we're creating a free um, a page that lists all the free uh, classes for health and wellness. So if you have any health and wellness free video stuff, send it my way. 
Uh, it's going to be sponsored uh, by uh, for the first six months uh, by U-Turn Parkinson's. Um, and if you're interested in sponsoring a page, whether it exists currently or you want to create a page on the PD Avengers website, uh, let me know. Uh, we can talk about that. It's very affordable because <laughs> we don't need a lot of money. We just need a little bit. Um, and uh, and then the, just so you know, because uh, I know we said we we wouldn't actively fundraise and we're not. Uh, we're, what we're trying to do is find other unique ways to through sponsorship and whatnot. Uh, but there is a now on the on the very bottom of the home page of the website for PD Avengers is a donate button. And that is there because there are a lot of people that are asking how they can donate and there's no way there was no way for them to do that. And it's just missed opportunity for us. And so we're not going to promote it. We're not going to tell anybody it's there, but it's there. Uh, and if anybody has a real big problem with that, let me know and we can we can talk about some alternatives. But I, I wanted to make you aware of that in case you stumbled across it and you're like, wait, what's this? Uh, we're not we're not going to tell anybody that, you know, if, if they reach out to me directly, I'll give them the link. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to. But I also we encourage people to uh, donate to all of you guys as well. So um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about that, but I want to make, sh make sure you are aware. Next up, we have Nina Junker from Germany, PD Avengers Germany, who just is finished up a super successful crazy spark art challenge. So the, the crazy spark um, art challenge was the whole month of January. And this was um, our final picture with uh, some of the artwork we collected during this month. In the end, we had 230 posts and um, 77 active participants, but with the, uh, all the artwork we collected, we had, um, I made a video for each week we, ha we had, and we had almost 30,000 viewers of these videos in the whole month of January. And um, about uh, 18,000 views on Instagram and 12,600 on Facebook. And um, yeah, thanks to Jennifer from Parkinson's Europe, there was an article in Parkinson's Life but unfortunately it was only um, released on the 26th of January. So almost when the challenge was over. And I want to show you my favorite, the favorite picture of the challenge I had. This is this one. Can you all see it? Mm -hmm. It was um, created by um, a person with PD. Um, her name is um, Tina and she lives in Switzerland. And yeah, and we also had uh, a lady, um, she had never had any contact with people with Parkinson's before, and her name is Lydia. And she is a neurographic uh, artist, and she made a video for us, uh, which she posted on her um, YouTube channel, where she also talked about the spark and about Parkinson's. And um, she she created two different sparks. This was the first one she created, and she also made a second one. And in the end, uh, we made like a raffle and uh, people could um, get these two sparks and also another spark we, we had. And um, yeah, we had some lucky winners and got also some donations in, for Germany, it's, um, well, it's difficult to collect money. People are not very willing to um, spend for money for artwork or for raffles or something like that. So. It was only 300 euros, but at least 100 euro per picture. And we are super happy and I think it was a success. And I just want to mention one last thing. This is, uh, you might see this section here. This is, um, these are all people with young onset Parkinson's. And um, I asked people to send me their photo and the age they were diagnosed. And so these, um, these uh, pictures are from people from Italy, from um, Ireland, from Switzerland, Germany, Austria, um, US, Canada, Spain, and um, I think I forgot some. That's yeah, great. great Britain. And uh, who else do I see? I think that's about it. But um, so Lots of people contributed their pictures. And in the end, I made a little um, 
video. And this video was also viewed by people for about 10,000 um, times. So I decided to put it into the um, WPC amateur video competition just to raise, not because I think that it will be super successful, but just to raise more awareness for young onset Parkinson's. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I love this campaign because it, it, it allowed people to, to really use their creativity. Um, I, and I think what we're going to try to do is, is sort of do it again during April. Um, and give people an opportunity to, to, to show their creativity that way too, based on what you did, Nina, because I think it's just amazing. Uh, I like the, the, the guy who, who uh, shaved it into his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Eagles there with uh, the spark on his chest. Uh, I love people who use the food. There are several food ones. Uh, there's the orange. Um, and yeah. the eyeball. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the Johnny Aitchison did one. It's, it's just really creative, and it, it brings the community together. And um, yeah, definitely these we, these these uh, these will spark more sparks. I think so. Uh, if you want to um, or help organize a sort of a creative spark competition or challenge your um, your uh, members to that, uh, we would be open to that. You can do it on your own, or you can tell us you're going to do it. We can help you with it, either way. Um, and uh, so, just I just wanted to share that because I thought it was really, really clever. Um, so the we are going to do the sit to stand um, uh, for stand up to Parkinson's uh, on April 11th around the world. There's going to be one website, which is standinguptoparkinsons.com. Uh, and uh, this is where everybody can register how many sit to stands they do. Uh, and I think Tim and the gang will be uh, sending out collateral on that uh, before too long. Uh, we're, we're working uh, on an online symptom guide, which will feature symptoms of Parkinson's disease and reactions to medications. It'll be a very easy to uh, load, simple page because there's a lot of people in the low income countries that don't have a lot of data on their phones. And so we want to make sure that they can get the information without sucking all the data from their phones. Um, we're working on a universal support group guide with PMD Alliance. And um, there's new research out now um, that work with Parkinson Canada and with U-Turn Parkinson's uh, on the benefits for people with Parkinson's who sing in a choir. Uh, we posted it on our Facebook page. It's all, actually it's on our homepage, pdavengers.com if you're interested. Uh, and uh, it's really uh, interesting uh, research. Advocacy wise, um, we are uh, uh, the online guide to free health and wellness resources, which I mentioned, powered by U-Turn Parkinson's. And then uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this storytelling uh, uh, app. Uh, and uh, we're, we're working on uh, plans for, for a YOPD stage uh, at the PD, uh, uh, the uh, World Parkinson's Congress, in addition to a PD Avenger stage. Um, and uh, we, we're coming up with ideas on that. So if that's something that you, and it's going to be not branded by us or, or by Spotlight YOPD or the YOPN, we're all working together on it. Uh, but it, it'll be near the um, research um, area uh, with the near Helen's uh, and Michael J. Fox area. Right, Helen? She's nodding. Um, and then. Um, Always on mute when you don't need to be. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Larry. That's okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the YOPD village is going to be bang next door to the clinical research village and just looking at ideas around that. Um, and also looking at how we can embrace YOPD into the clinical research village, also women with Parkinson's into the clinical research village. So there's as much sort of crossover between both sections. For sure. Uh, speaking of women and Parkinson's, um, there uh, is uh, the, the the Fox Insight Research Survey is still open, so please encourage folks to to fill out that survey. Um, and then um, we also have the Medication Equity Group uh, investigating access to basic dopamine replacement for developing nations, and uh, part of a, a, a ten uh, I think it's a ten million pound uh, grant is going to be go towards 
uh, some of the work that Tosh is doing for the P with the PD Avengers in Africa. So we're excited about that. Uh, and then I just wanted to note that, you know, I don't know if you guys are feeling it, but there's a lot more Parkinson's and pop culture these days. And I just wanted to bring some of them to your attention. Um, you may have seen this uh, documentary on your Netflix called Stutz. And it's about Jonah Hill and his friend and therapist, Phil Stutz, who happens to live with Parkinson's. Um, and so Parkinson's is sort of like a, a B story or a C storyline in it, but it's, it's present and it's talked about. Um, Michael J. Fox just uh, put out a, uh, I don't know that you can watch it yet because it's still in the festivals. It's called Still. It's a, it's a document, documentary um, about his life with Parkinson's and they use archive footage and, um, they, and then they also have some new original interviews that they've done. Um, oh, here's the trailer. What's up, Stats? <laughs> Hi, Jonah. Okay, entertain me. <laughs> I'm just going to start by acknowledging how odd this endeavor is. A patient making a movie about his therapist. But my life has gotten immeasurably better as a result of working with you. If it worked for me, maybe it will work for other people. The average shrink will say, don't intrude on the patient's process. They will come up with the answers when they're ready. That's not acceptable. They just listen. And your friends, who are idiots, give you advice. And you want your friends just to listen. <laughs> and you want your therapist to give you advice. You don't have to solve all their problems, but you have to give somebody the feeling that they can change right now. What's wrong, Jonah? How can I make a movie where I'm talking about people being vulnerable and working on their problems and not be vulnerable myself? You can't move forward without being vulnerable. Vulnerability connects you to the rest of the world. You're giving out the signal to the world, I need you because I can't do this by myself. I was this wildly insecure kid. The work has been accepting and feeling that it's great to be this person. You are still in the struggle and in the fight of being a human just like everybody else. Take action no matter how frightened you are. If you can teach somebody that, they can change their whole life. That makes a lot of sense. This is such a great moment right now. I still wish you would stop dumping so much shit on me. <laughs> This is either the greatest documentary ever made or the worst, and it's probably both. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of that. Uh, Happy Hour, the Neurologist is um, uh, is uh, an interesting one. That's in, um, I think, I believe it's in Spanish. Um, the only day we have is coming from Alan Cole, who does the uh, PDYs, and it's uh, still, uh, they're still trying to raise funds to finish it, uh, but they've got a nice six minute uh, uh, trailer that's on YouTube right now. Um, but, uh, and then uh, Shrinking, I've, uh, I don't know if you've seen this on Apple Plus, I'll play you a little bit of this. Be me for a second. Would you trust you? The answer is no. Well, you didn't let me be you. Here. Jimmy, sorry for always being so hard on you. It's only because I love you. I don't talk like that. When Harrison said that he would do it and I saw the announcement, I thought it was a practical joke. It seemed unreal that you wanted to do this show with me. Oh, man, come yeah. on. Well, that's really true. And I'm sure at some point. <laughs> this is my every day. Sit down, Jimmy. If I sit down, I'm gonna feel like I'm in trouble. You are in trouble. They wanted John Wayne, but they were disappointed to hear about his... <laughs> you know who the most important person in your life is right now? You. No, you. Your daughter. Right, that's what I meant. I'm second. Okay. In all seriousness? I've always admired his work. The writing is uh, fantastic, and the relationship is... To me, really funny and interesting. He doesn't think so, but I do. <laughs> Can we talk? I don't need another lecture. It's about Gabby. Oh, I was kind of looking forward to a fight. Yeah, I could tell. These two guys, they have a mentor-mentee relationship, but I think it's also a surrogate father-son relationship. Jimmy desperately wants Paul's approval. You just said you love me. No, I did not. Well, it sounded like you did. Hmm. I think 
Paul has a really complicated relationship with his kids and sees Jimmy as potentially a son. So the show is all about lines being blurred. And I think that the Paul-Jimmy relationship is a real example of that. I've known you for years. I've never met your daughter. Yeah, what is she like? She lives in Connecticut. Wow, it's like she's in the room. The character that Jason plays is complex and uh, visceral and exciting. The relationship comes from the writers, but there also is a personal relationship that, that fuels me. Who knows how you grieve? You haven't even begun. What are you talking about? I've been grieving for a year. Oops, sorry. Here. No. You've been numbing. I'm worried about you. It's the kind of material where I don't know from one moment to the next whether I'm going to laugh or cry. I feel enormously lucky to just be part of the thing. Same. And I think it's good for people to laugh. You should see Harrison Ford do comedy. Not today. No, not today. <laughs> do you know what percentage of yourself is actually made of water? I know what percentage of me doesn't give it. OK, well, that's the dehydration talking. So Harrison Ford's character has Parkinson's, and it plays a significant uh, part of this uh, series. And then um, I think you probably are all aware of this, but the ITV has a has a lead character in a, a TV show called The Suspect. All fear can be overcome, rational and irrational. And sometimes we need help in doing that. That's why I'm here. Isn't that what your job is, Joe, to work out what's true and what isn't? You're the doctor who saved that boy. Have you ever been involved in profiling? You know that you cannot use anything that you have found out today. Joe, are you asking me to lie to the police? Is he involved somehow? What else are you hiding? Why did you lie to us? Who's them? Who on earth would want to do that to you? Rooftop hero or sick killer? Why would someone want to set you up for murder? Brand new drama, The Suspect. Uh, there are uh, other movies uh, that are out there as well um, that, that are really good. Uh, I know that Parkinson's Life has featured a lot of them. Um, and so I think it's just good material to, to share with, with the community. Uh, and, and the more that we make it, we, we, we bring it to people's attention. And it's part of these these great movies and streaming videos and, and TV shows, I think that's good for us. It keeps the awareness up there in a number of different ways. And so um, I just wanted you to, to be able to see uh, some of those if you haven't seen those yet. Now we'll open the floor. Um, if you have anything to add, that's all I've got for this week. Um, so um, feel free to uh, share with us what you're doing. Oh yeah, your two-day conference is coming up. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, it's next. Uh, we have a two day virtual conference happening next Wednesday and Thursday, the 15th and 16th. We've got more than 25 speakers and special guests. Um, two great days of programming from expert presentations to panel discussions with people with Parkinson's, panel discussion with care partners, lots of opportunity for live QA. We've got some breakout sessions, we have activity sessions, so you can try some singing and dancing and painting. Um, so a little bit of everything, um, something for everyone. It's totally free. The link is in the in the chat. We encourage people to spread the word, to join us um, for all of it, for some of it, um, whatever whatever works for you. But uh, just wanted to spread the word. And you have We've got four million people signed up, right? Four million. No, no four million. <laughs> but we're at oh gosh, we were at twenty to almost twenty four hundred people That's registered. Amazing which is really exciting. So yeah, 2,387. So oh, that's great. So yeah, so so join us. Yes, that's It'll great. A great two days. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, thank you. Who else would like to share? Just Sorry. repeat my call out for any um, awareness anti-stig materials to be sent uh, my my way or to Francesco Dorenzi's. Uh, we're the co-chairs for that anti-stigma working group with WPC, and we are collecting materials. So, if there, if anyone has anything, please, uh, please uh, send it to us, and 
we would be happy to add it to the collection. Great, thanks, Jean. All right, well, thanks to everybody. Uh, if that's, that's all, if you have any questions or you wanna follow up with me, Larry at pdavengers.com. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I, I really appreciate your time today and know how valuable it is. Uh, now go back and do all the awesome things you do and have a great weekend.